welcome back everyone this is will with srt amplification i know i haven't done a video in a while uh just getting moved into my new workbench give you kind of a tour of what i got going on here moved into my downstairs basement area and haven't been doing many videos lately but I'm about to. I've got several things that I'm working on down here. Maybe you can see those. I don't know. But uh, today on the bench, we got something kind of special, I think. It's uh, it's kind of it's kind of a strange operating piece of equipment. And unfortunately, I don't have the probe that is required for this it's a special type of end connector and if anybody out there has one I would love to have it not only is the connector special but the actual probe leads themselves are a special type for this application so what what is this thing well this happens to be piece of test equipment that you can test very very small currents and voltages it is the HP model 423 alpha DC micro volt amp meter so if you look at the manual on this which we're gonna look at a little bit later the block diagram and the schematic and everything but it's for or it's for testing very very small uh, voltages and currents. One application that this could be used for is a testing leakage currents and let's say capacitors or insulation uh, leakage currents or something like that. Uh, but the the manual also talks about it, it could be used in chemistry or or biology to test voltages of uh, single cell organisms and all kinds of different things it's it was probably used in a lab somewhere I'm sure uh, but without this special probe that that goes on here um, it, I haven't figured out a way to to, to use it yet um, now, this connector is almost like an end connector uh, like, uh, you know, an old, I guess maybe like a microphone connector or something like that. The, the difference is, is this outside part that twists on here is completely isolated from the inner shield of the, of the cable. In other words, the inner shield of the cable doesn't make contact with the chassis at all. It's, it's completely isolated. And so let's just look at the front here. Zoom in a little bit here. On the front we have a zero potentiometer and a function, either current or voltage. And then you have your power switch, your jewel lamp, and then you have all of your different ranges uh, depending on what you're, what you're using it for, a current or or there's milli milli to micro amps, milli volts, micro micro amps, which would be uh, what pico amps, very very small amps, micro volts, volts, micro amps, and then on the bottom there's milli amps. So it can go all the way down to like ten pico amps or ten up to you know it's probably one pico amp be on the top so all the way down to one pico amp very very small amperage so it's got a very nice meter movement it's got uh, the parallax mirror on it which is great uh, let's let's get up here a little bit you can see the top I think this is a calibration sticker or this is actually a, a serial number sticker from the corporation where it came from Red Core Corporation, Kango, Canoga Park, California. 
uh, this old leather handle, which is all cracked, but it's still there. This is probably from the late 50s. We'll look inside it and see if we can get a date on some of the caps or something. But I think it's like 59, 60, somewhere in there. There's a calibration sticker right there from Redcore. It was calibrated last in uh, 1971. And it's due again in 1972. I think they missed it, though. So there's that. Let's look at the back. All right, here on the back, we have a power cord. Let's get it. It is a three-prong power cord with a grounded plug. Probably needs to be cleaned up a little bit. It has this little shorting strap here on the back. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a little shorting. And that is going to... Uh, basically take the the ground chassis to the ground lug or this would this would be the ground lug for the outputs and ground it to the chassis is what that will do uh, if you don't if you want it completely isolated the manual says to keep this keep this off so you would just leave it hanging here and not connected to this one so then it'd be completely isolated fuse holder and then your amplitude adjustment for your attenuated output. So that's the back. Let's take this thing apart and see what we got inside. Now I've already taken one of the screws out to make this easier. I really want to show you what's so unique about this piece of equipment. Okay. Let's slide this out. So you can see we have a lot of tubes. We have a, let's get you up here where you can see. There is a, let's see here. There is a 6X4, which I think is a rectifier tube. There is an OA2. I believe that's some kind of a regulator. And an OB2, that's probably another regulator tube. Let me see if I can get you focused on here. There you go, OB2. There's a 12AT7 AT7 and a 12AX7. Both of these, I believe, are for amplifier circuit. And this is probably our first stage, the 5751. That's right at the input section. And we got a bunch of filter caps, transformer, and there's some tuning capacitors there for the filters. Uh, we'll look at that a little bit later on when we get into the schematic. But what's really cool about this thing is what lies underneath here. Okay. So this thing has a selenium bridge rectifier right here. And I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me get this thing. Oh, this is going to knock your socks off. Right down here is a AC motor, synchronous motor, and this is what does the, um, so, 
Let me let me back up a little bit. The signals you're putting into the input of this thing are very, 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 very small DC signals. And so you have to amplify that in order to get this meter to, to actually work. So the way this works, to the best of my understanding, and they could they can do this nowadays with one IC chip. But basically they're using this motor as kind of a chopper circuit to basically produce a square wave. And the way it works, although the manual really doesn't describe exactly how it works, uh, from, from what I gather, the way it works is um, that your 60 hertz line somehow makes this turn at 5, 6 the line frequency, uh, which in this case would be 50 hertz. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why the motor runs at 50 hertz off the 60 hertz line. There's something inside there that 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 is that is doing that. I don't know. I don't know how that, that works. The manual really doesn't go into that. But this motor turns at 50 hertz if you got a 60 hertz line. It turns at like um, 42 or something if you got a 50 hertz line. But whatever, it, it, it turns at 5, 6 the line frequency. Um, what it does is when it turns, it's got, there's a little light interrupter in there, a little wheel that turns with it. We'll look at this in the manual a little bit. You can kind of see it a little bit better. But there's these four light bulbs, one here, one here, and two on the other side uh, that are AC light bulbs. So I think the reason why the motor's got to turn at a different speed then the line frequency is these AC light bulbs are actually going on and off at 60 hertz. So I think if this was turning at 60 hertz, you, it wouldn't wouldn't give you the right effect. But anyway, the light line shines through those slits of this wheel that's turning back here. And there's these little light, I don't know if you can see them or not. Maybe on the other side. There's these little light pipes here that these light bulbs will shine through and they'll only get through those slits that are in that wheel that's turning. It goes into this compartment right here which is the modulator board. Let's take that off right quick and we can look at that. Okay, so you have this little modulator board in here that these light and there's some photo. This is just, we'll look at this on the schematic a little bit, but this little board right here is just made up of a bunch of different resistors and a couple of photo cells. And the photo cells are going to either turn on or off various resistors here at different times. So basically what you're going to end up with is a square wave coming out of here. Okay. And that's kind of, I guess that's why they call it a chopper, because you're basically chopping up an AC signal into, into square waves. And you're modulating the signal that's coming in here, the DC signal, onto that, that square wave, if you will. So you basically have a representation of what's coming in on top of this. And this is always constant. And because this is always constant, I can demodulate this signal after I amplify it with these other light bulbs that you saw on the other side that are turning that are shining and, and, and turning on the exact same speed because it's on the same motor. The motor's turning that same wheel. So it demodulates what you did here, and then you're left with an amplified DC signal, basically, is how it's working. So Looking at the schematic, I saw that there was a couple of diodes in here, solid state diodes. I believe they're probably germanium power diodes, and I see there's three of them right here. But I only saw two on the schematic, so I don't know what the third one is. Also, right down here, there's a little neon bulb. And that neon bulb is in the circuit for um, 
protection, over voltage protection. So if you were to over override, you know, put a signal on the input here that was larger than this thing can measure, this light bulb would, would it goes right to ground and it would turn on and take that uh, current. So it's just basically for protection. I don't think under normal, like I said, I haven't turned this thing on or anything, but I don't think under normal operation this neon bulb ever comes on. It's just a protection device. It's tied straight to ground here. So, um, then we also have this little box up there on top. Let me focus you in on that. And we'll see this in the schematic as well. This little box on top is a tuning capacitor for the fil for the filtering uh, to take that 60 hertz out, or it'd be 50 hertz, I guess, because yeah, we're modulating at 50 hertz, so it's going to take the the 50 hertz out. Um, see if I can get this off. So this little thing right here is, is kind of a neat deal in itself. So we, we already got this motor and these light bulbs, right? And now we have this little thing that's in a, in a tube socket, socketed, and it goes down into a tube socket. It's got pins, right? It goes down into a tube socket, and it's just a um, some kind of resin encased capacitors. And if you look at this, it shows your red ones are for your, your 60 hertz line and your blue ones are for your 50 hertz line. So you can tune that to filter that out. And so those are your tuning capacitors right there. I thought that was just really cool. Uh, there's also a little meter calibration pot right there. Here's your meter cal. And there's another little adjustment right there, but I don't know what that's about. Right down in that hole. I'm not sure what that goes to. Uh, that may just be to, to get to the screw to take that top part off. I think that's what it is. So, um, I really wish I had the probes for this because I'd like to demonstrate it. But I just thought it was neat to actually document. We have a little slow blow fuse there. I don't know what the current value is on that. Can't read it without my magnifier. Going blind. Alright, so anyway, let's look at the schematic a little bit. So I've got this pulled up on my computer here, on the monitor. You can see there's the motor, what they're calling A6, the chopper assembly. And supposedly it has a little eye in the back of it that you can see if the motor is actually operating or not. There's your, full, your four 6.3 volt AC bulbs. B1 is the actual motor. We'll see that on the schematic here in a little bit. It actually runs off a the same 6.3 volt AC power supply that the bulbs operate on. And then you have your little light interrupter disc there that's spinning behind the bulbs and it's making that uh, square wave. So let me slide on down in the... This is a very detailed... There's your uh, modulator board tells you where you can tech, connect the oscope and get a get the signal off of that that's kind of what it looks like the square wave for the modulator it's not quite a it's not quite a square wave it's just kind of a choppy sine wave so that tells you kind of what it needs to look like and then here's the assembly itself like we looked at 
There's the little precision resistors for the stack rotary switch for all your ranges. And there's your calibration procedures. Like I said, if I can find a a probe for this, a, a proper probe, I'll do all these these procedures and, and get this thing up and running in another video. So here's the block diagram. Well, no, I thought there was a block diagram somewhere. Maybe I went right past it. Let's see if I can find the block diagram. Okay, so here's the block diagram. Basically, the, how it works is you have your input. It goes through a low-pass filter. And then it goes through the modulator portion. The modulator portion consists of, you know, that light beam chopper and all that stuff, right? And then it, that's kind of the, I guess, the feedback. And then... The, where it has a little op amp looking circuit that's really not a, a solid state op amp like we would think of an op amp that is just uh, several stages of a uh, tube amplification and you can see that the DC is modulated based off the light beam chopper right and then it's demodulated at the other end but in between it's amplified and you have that 50 cycles per second uh, reject filter and that's that filter that I showed you on top that uh, is uh, got the pins and it has the, the tube socket and then once you have the DC it goes through another uh, filter so there's two of them on there there was two red ones and two blue ones right so one of them is for the feedback and one of them is is at the other end and then you have a DC cathode follower on the output and then of course you have all your range resistors and everything in between but that's kind of how it works so let's slide down here to the schematic real quick and we can see how this thing's kind of working here so this is A4 of the modulator right here and the input to that basically they break out this modulator out here onto this and this is what I was telling you about on that little board so you basically have all of these different voltage dividers here for the various outputs that you're, you're going to. And depending on the light from the motors, this is going to conduct or not conduct. These aren't photodiodes. I don't even know if they had photodiodes at this time or they may have used them. I don't know. Uh, but these are just basically photoresistors. They're like photocells, right? So they're going to conduct they're going to go from a state of low resistance to high resistance, right? Um, so they're basically acting like a switch. So they're switching on and off. And based off of their on and offness, uh, your, the output is going to be determined, okay? And that output's going to go over here to C4, which is your output right here. And this is what's going to be amplified at the end here. That's your first stage of amplification. So that's what's happening in the modulator. It's basically taking the DC signal that's coming in here, modulating it with this, this signal that you're, you're creating with this chopper and amplifying it on the other end, in a nutshell. There's your, uh, reg, uh, your oh, run right up here, there's that neon bulb. See, it's just connected to ground. So basically, it's just being used as a um, as a protection device. That's it. Um, down here, we have our rectifier tube, which is our 6x4. It's a full wave rectifier. So there's two diodes in there. And then there's our, our two voltage regulators to set up our... our um, our different rails. This rail right here is a 255 volt rail. And this right here, this I guess this is an unregulated supply, 285 volt rail. There's those two diodes 
or two of the three diodes. Like I said, I don't know where the other diode is. Uh, there's one diode on the piece of equipment itself that's not on here. I do, do not know where that is. Um, here's another. Okay, well, this is your. Oh, here's your power cord. And this is the primary of your transformer with that fuse that we saw in the switch. Yeah. Secondary, there's your full bridge rectifier. Here is all of that 6.3 volt stuff. You got three of your um, tubes, filaments, and then those four AC uh, lamps. And then when we go down to the next section down here, you can see Oh, and then there's actually five lamps. This lamp right here is the um, the actual pilot light, the on-off light that you see at the top, at the at the front of the unit. And then B1, that's your motor, so it's actually running off that 6.3 volts. So the frequency through this is 60 hertz. So, like I said, I don't know what's going on here to cause the the motor to turn at 50 hertz, but there's something inside that motor that's caused that causes it to turn at 5, 6, the line frequency. So, I, like I said, I, the, the manual doesn't go into that, how it does that, but there's something that does that for some reason. Uh, going up here, you have more amplification. Here's that demodulator right here with your other two light bulbs. So this is being demodulated at the same synchronous uh, frequency as the the bulbs on the uh, on the modulation side. You have bulbs that are hitting these and causing conduction and non-conduction on this. So that's your demodulator, and then here's your bias adjustment for your for your amplifier right here. Here's your cathode follower that we saw in that diagram. And that's your output right here. And this output is going to, this output you could go to, uh, I mean, obviously you have your meter on, on the output, right? It's attenuated. This is also attenuated output. You can see this attenuation right here attenuation right here on the meter but yeah I thought this was neat I thought I would uh, share it um, again all of this modulation demodulation stuff that this thing's doing can be done in a, in a, in a single IC chip nowadays but they decided to do it this way on this unit so get you another shot of this thing Obviously, if I do get this thing up and running, I'm probably going to have to recap it. Especially these filter caps up here. This, this filter cap right here is isolated from the chassis. So, that's something we've got to watch out for right there. We've got to make sure that this is not touching the chassis. So... It's not grounded, in other words. So there it is. I know this was a kind of just a ad-libbed video, but I figured I'd get something out there. And hopefully, if you, if you guys know where I can get one of the probes for this thing that are work. Oh, let me show you on the, uh, I'll show you in the manual exactly what this probe's got, got to be, I think. Let's see. I think it shows the probe here. Let's see. There's a probe right there. That's what it looks like. Okay. 
but it says something about it that's particular. Uh, let's see. There it is. There's another picture of it. There it talks about isolating the chassis, removing that metal shorting strap. So there, there's an application for that output to a recorder device right there. There you go. Uh, let's see where that probe is. Because um, there, there's a very particular... There it is. But it says it's a special type of very low resistance um, wire in the probe. And here's the uh, the probe assembly number right there. If any of you guys can point me in the right direction, that'd be great. Um, I don't know where it, where it talks about that, but I did read it in here about how that works. I could probably do a a search, but. All right, well, that's going to be all for this one. Let me know if you can... Hey, there's my little kitty. Hey, Lucy. Hey, Lucy. All right. Thanks for watching.